In this video, I'm going to try to use the Bing search chat bot that is powered by the OpenAI, I think it's chat GPT-4. I want to see what it can do for me. So in prior video, I talked about XML and rendering it with CSS. So I'm going to see if the chatbot can actually do that for me. So first I'm going to say, can you help me transform XML using CSS? Okay, so it's just doing a search. Now that's pretty sweet. So right here, the bot accurately brought up the XML tag. Yep, so that's great. Gave a little history, XSL, XSLT, which are things I'm not really interested in using, but it does say XSLT is far more sophisticated than CSS. It allows you to actually manipulate the XML nodes. We're not trying to do that here. I'm just trying to render the CSS and have the XML stay as it is. So apply the CLS, CSS. So I'm going to see what this does next. Please display the following XML as a table as an HTML table using CSS. And I'm going to paste this and let's see what happens. Uh, actually, I still have the tag in there. I don't think I want that. So let me let me take the style sheet tag out just for this example. Let's grab it. Let's paste it. Let's see what it does. This will be interesting. Okay, it actually did the transformation. This is this is pretty neat. Now, granted, if you have a lot of data, I don't think it's going to work very well. But it got the industry, it got the header, so it really only did the first three of the five rows. Now, what's interesting here, too, is it offered up the CSS display table but that's a stock thing because products are not I don't have any XML tags that say products in here or product but it does properly talk about the CSS property of table table cell so that's cool but gives you a suggestion to replace products and the nicety here is the it's giving credit where credit is due so it's definitely going to the stack overflow article that it pulled that from and now here's the true transformation intriguing that it left the XML declaration not really necessary because 
it converted it into a true HTML page. So this right here, starting with the doc type declaration, that's going pure HTML. And it's giving you some CSS styles here. So if we were to grab this, and I'll grab the XML declaration, but it's really not, not necessary. Uh, let's grab this. Let's copy this. Let's go to our VS Code. Let's create a new file. Let's paste it. And we can see how it's picking up as XML, even though we don't have an extension here. It's reading that declaration. So we really don't need that. That's that's really not necessary. So if we save this, we can save this as a Bing generated HTML table dot HTML. And if I change this down here, I can change the format to HTML. I'm going to just pick it here because I didn't fix it first so there you go is html instead of dropping it well i'll put it in with the fields it doesn't matter it's just it's just for testing purposes here so let's save that you can see it automatically automatically if you will flipped over and changed the format now i can format document and now i get some better indentation etc as to what's going down and starts and untags. Yep. Let's see what this looks like. So we'll save it. And this is in this folder structure being generated. It'd be cool if I could copy the path. Oh well. Alright. Let's go file. go and we'll pick this and we'll get into here Salesforce sandbox sandbox we're gonna go into force app we're gonna go into main defaults we are gonna go into our objects the lookup and fields folder and there it is right so this is giving you the three rows. Here's your header row. Mm -hmm. Here's the data. Yep. So it is a it is a, a, a well built HTML example. Now, interestingly enough, to get the other two XML rows, you could manually type this in and follow the syntax if you're not familiar with it. Maybe what we could do. Let's try this as a hack here. Let's see if. Okay, so let's see here. It grabbed our first three. So the header, the the next row, and the next row. So we're missing these two rows. So we could do one of two things. We could grab it all again, but let's let's just try and see if we can run these two rows. So I'm going to grab those two rows. And I think there is a character limitation on how much you can put in chat GPT. I think it's 2,000 characters. Let's see what else it says here. Ask me anything. Yeah, so there's 2,000. So maybe I hit the threshold. Please convert these two rows. Okay. And let's see what it does. So 873 of the 2000 is used. Let's see if it can kind of continuously think and say, okay, well, I just did this stuff. Mm, no. So that's not. Okay, now that's intriguing. That just converted it to JSON, which is pretty cool. I mean, that's really pretty cool. It's not the right answer, it's not what I'm looking for. I would like to, okay, let's go back to the original question that I asked it and say, all right, I think we hit the 2,000 characters. That's just my guess. 
So, I'm going to take this again. I'm going to copy this. I'm going to paste that again. And now I want to uh, please display the following XML as. Yeah, we'll just do as HTML table. Let's let's see what we can get here. We're gonna go back. We're gonna copy these again. We're gonna go back to our chat. I'm gonna paste. Yeah, my guess is that it ran up against the 2,000 character limit. Let's see if it does. No, it doesn't like it. Oh, it's still searching. Okay. So there you go. And there are your later two rows. Now this is only five rows. I mean, if you're going to try and do this with a lot of rows, you're going to probably have some challenges. But we got our customer industry. So if I copy that and I go back into my HTML table and I actually go where it says add more rows here, which is kind of ironic. I'm going to do that. And I go ahead and save this. And then I head back to refresh there's your whole table yeah this is pretty neat this is pretty neat stuff so this this is a transformation though I want to make that clear this is not a pure CSS rendition of the XML which if we go back here and we back this out a little bit Let's just go to fields and take a look at our fields combined XML, right? So this is still, this still has the underlying true XML. If we were to look at the source here, you're still seeing the XML. So this is the raw XML, but it is transformed via CSL, it, CSS, it's rendered. It's rendered. We're giving instructions to the browser to render it. Whereas here, if you look at the raw source, you can clearly see its tabular markup. So this is pure HTML tabular markup. And that's what the chat GPT engine did, which was, it did the transformation. This would be the equivalent of uh, XML, uh, XSL, XSLT transformation. Or if someone wrote a program that basically says, okay, for each of these XML nodes, I'm going to swap it out with relevant tabular HTML tabular markup. So the, the engine there just did a transformation. It took the raw XML and basically transferred it into HTML that can be rendered directly by the browser style rules. And it added its own custom CSS because that's what you have up here. You have basically a style sheet which is saying, hey, for tables we want to collapse the border. So it makes it a little bit, uh, a little bit better for presentation, it gave you some colors you could completely get rid of the style and it would just render as a raw table to do that it just looks like this so we're going to comment that block out and then we're going to head back into our browser we'll refresh and that's a raw table that html will give you and that's what the browser engine would say hey this is giving us table markup this is how we're going to display it with a default style sheet that the browser comes with for how to render HTML tables. After that, you're basically off to just doing some custom styling, but this is really interesting because the bot is doing, on a small scale, a data transformation. 
If you want to consider it an ETL, you can consider it an ETL. An extract, a transform, a load. I don't know if it's a puritanical definition of ETL. Again, I don't get any religion about this stuff. But it is certainly interesting. So for snippets, or at least to guide someone to get started, there's that. Now, if you have hundreds of rows, yeah, this is not going to be fun because you're going to either copy and paste rows at a time to be under the 2000 character limit or yeah, not really sure how you'd want to do that. I do find it interesting though that it extracted the tag names and made a header row for you. That's really cool. That's nice of it. Hey, you're getting this for free. This is impressive. So this is, this is neat stuff and I think the future this transformation of it into JSON, which could be fed into some other system. That's another plus here in terms of what you see. This is pretty impressive at a small scale right now. And then the question is, how could you get an entire file just to get pushed in there? But you're effectively not writing any code to do this. You're taking what's been given you and then you're, you're putting it into the bot and saying go ahead and, and do the transform for me. I like the resource here, the w3schools.com. That is definitely a site that highly, highly recommend folks to go take a look at. I'm wondering what other ones I got. Stack Overflow, of course, yeah. Oh, this is great stuff, impressive. So, you can potentially use, and this is the Bing chatbot, there is chat GPT. I can't speak to the Bard product. I'm not sure if that would do the same, but I'm pretty pleased with what this has done for me. Even with the simple ask that I gave it and while it clipped for the 2000 characters and that's a bummer, it still gives you a fighting chance to ask a question and and get really a very precise answer now is my question very specific well I started off with transform XML using CSS I don't know if that's a real deep question or not obviously if you don't know these technologies you're gonna be kind of feeling your way through it, but that's normal. Please display the following XML as an HTML table using CSS. So I guess that's a relatively precise question that I asked. So I guess you could argue this was kind of helping it. I think it's still fantastic for what is provided, how easily it happened, how quickly it happened. It didn't do the whole table. Yep, I get that. But that's also something then. Is there a power mode that'll let you put in 10,000 characters, 100,000 characters? Who knows? I'm sure that's coming. I'm sure that'll be a paid for version. Good stuff. So I just wanted to record this video to show, based off of the other video, which was decades of knowledge to show, hey, you could do this, and the bot here is doing it. It's doing the transformation, though. It's not doing a pure rendering of those XML tags. That's this approach. And this could be styled using the same styling that was created inside the bot here. I could easily bring over the CSS styles into this to have it look in a similar way like this, this the, the, the zebra striping, if you will, the header, etc. All right, so that's nothing that I'm going to say is one versus the other, apples versus oranges. That's that's apples to apples still. But what is not apples to apples is there's no transformation of the data here. That definitely is different. Now, I'm not sure what kind of question I could ask for it to keep that XML. That might be something for future exploration or if you're happy that this gave you some guidance 
then conceivably you could you could go ahead and, and do your markup this way because this is true and this is good HTML so this is TH for the headers versus TDs for the actual cell data so you want to make sure there's that distinction you can get all that on W3 schools hope this was helpful thanks <laughs>